Hello and welcome everyone. In this tutorial, you will be covering interaction between Sencha Touch, ASP.NET, in the MVC fashion. MVC stands for Model, View, and Controller. In this, we will be having a login screen where the Sencha front end will be used to invoke, and this Sencha front end will prompt the user for the username and password. Once the username and password have been entered, then ASP.NET will validate whether the user entered is appropriate or not. So this is how the project hierarchy looks like. You have the lib and the resources originating from Sencha Touch that can be downloaded from Sencha Touch website and the others controllers models and views is proprietary to asp.net mvc you can create a new project of that type by going to file new project go to c sharp from c sharp select web select asp.net mvc empty web application punch in the project name click on ok now you start off by adding a new controller right click add new controller F for the time being I've created account controller.cs which has the index and a view attached to it if I right click go to the view it goes to the index view so here we are the index view so in the index if you see my head my part from the beginning of the head to no, the ending of the head to the starting of the head is populated by Sencha and the body of it is empty this part has got three components so we first include the Sencha touch library and we, ha we have the CSS of Sencha Touch and we have one more script tag that will actually form the URL that is login URL for the Ajax request over here ASP.NET so this will actually point to the to log on as you see we're using the account and we're invoking the logon function here you go so what this basically does does is let's run the project see the output and then understand how does it function so by default the browser is set to Firefox I don't think Firefox can render Sencha because Firefox does not have support for uh, WebKit browsing so we open this in Chrome and yeah uh, if you run the server it won't run by itself you're supposed to invoke the name of the controller so in our case we have the controller called as account controller so let's copy the URL and since we're using account controller we type in account and you see just sun, the Sencha front end here we put the username as Kurtzis Kurtzis we punch in the login button it shows success this success is transmitted by ASP.NET now let's have a look at how does it go about doing that so within the script tag our starting point of the application is truth.js nested list we start off with the main panel and which is nothing but a card this card has got the login card in it this login card is here it's a panel which 
which has got various components it's basically a form and we have the username the password and we have a button field so once the button is clicked we call the function called do login now do login what does that do now do login will first invoke an alert box called inside then it sends an asynchronous Java and XML request a post in effect I mean it's a restful invocation we have the post here which posts the parameters username and the password once the username and password are sent the ASP.NET Ajax request will either trigger a failure or success now on success we are able to get into the action result within the controller we able to send the response as a JSON file now JSON can either send the error message or the response text if the login is successful we send the response text as success which is captured by the Sentia application if it is successful this part so if the error message if there's an error message from here then we inform the user that there's a login error because the username and password did not match and if the Ajax function didn't take you to this location because of some network error or maybe it's unreachable then failure is invoked otherwise even within success within you you can have failure as login error which is triggered by incorrect username and password so you can also set the main panel to have a loading icon which I haven't done for the time being and once it is successful we convey the response text this response text is constructed by the controller we don't have a model for the time being you can actually create a new model and have a get and set property there with the username and the password but I'm very sure that in later in the future this part will actually plunge into the database and will fetch the username and password we won't have a direct string comparison and of course there will be encryption so this is how Sencha is able to talk to ASP.NET in the model view and controller fashion if you see the view of the account is here so that's it for interaction between Sencha and ASP.NET